Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about hollow sun optic durability. Okay, and I have a bunch of guns on this on this table. They all have got uh, the optics on all these guns. All have more than ten thousand rounds. And um, the key point of this video, right, is that the optic will most likely outlast your gun. Okay, um, so that's the point of this video. I'm going to give you guys some details now. Uh, this optic that you guys see here on this uh, Lynx 12, right, is an AK-47 uh, shotgun. Okay, this did not start its life off on this gun. This started off its life on this gun over here, okay. Uh, however, okay, uh, this is not the original gun. Okay, the only part that's original of this AR-15 is the is the uh, lower receiver, okay. Uh, at... Uh, at about 22,000 rounds, uh, I completely uh, wore out the rifling in this barrel, and I sent this gun back to Radical Firearms for a free uh, barrel replacement under their lifetime warranty. So that, so up to that point, um, now of those 22,000 rounds, not all of them were done with this optic. Uh, because I only put it on there, I think, at around 10,000 rounds. So it did about 12,000 rounds. Uh, you know, this optic did 12,000 rounds on that gun. Uh, and then at that point, what I decided to do was I decided to put it on the, on this gun over here. Uh, where now this gun has about 15,000 rounds on it. But again, uh, for the first uh, six or 8,000 rounds, I did not have an optic on this, AK, on this uh, Lynx 12. I ran it just with the iron sights. So it is only in like the last 8,000 rounds that this optic um you know with on this gun so between these two guns right this optic right here um did 12,000 on this gun uh and then it did about another 7,000 on that gun okay so 12 plus uh seven what is it, what is it 19,000 rounds okay so that optic has done about 19 20,000 rounds between these two guns now about the same time i also decided to put this optic on this Lynx 12 here, right? Because I got two Lynx 12s here. Uh, each of these have about 15,000 rounds because I cycle the guns. Uh, and the same deal, I put this optic on here at around somewhere between six and 8,000 rounds, uh, now up to 15,000 rounds. And it's it's done all, it's done that round count, right? Whatever that is, 7,000 rounds. You know, this optic has done about 7,000 rounds on this Lynx 12, okay? Um, uh, over here, I've got three PX9s, okay? These are 9mm ARs. These are blowbacks. Blowbacks tend to uh, have more felt recoil uh, because it's a direct blowback. There's no rotating bolt to cushion the recoil at all. So all of these, these three optics here, they're all house on 510Cs. Right? That first one was a 503CU. These are all, these three are 510, uh, uh, 510Cs. Um, all of these, these three optics have done uh, 10,000 rounds on each of these guns, okay? Now, um, on each of these guns here, I have broken the hammer pins, I have broken hammer springs, I have broken extractors, okay? Uh, again, because, because blowback is very violent on the gun. Um, I originally started these off with the um, four ounce buffer weight. Um, and what I did is I increased that to an eight ounce buffer weight, which actually, you know, with the heavier buffer weight seems to have, um, slowed down the abuse on the gun a little bit. Um, now on this one over here, the barrel, uh, cracked at about 15,000 rounds. Okay. Um, so yeah, I said those guys that have 10,000 rounds, this one's got 15,000 rounds. Um, so the, the barrel on this cracked at about 15,000 rounds. And it was sent back to Palmetto for a free replacement. So again, the the optic outlasted the gun. Okay, these guns over here, about ten thousand rounds each. Um, again, I've broken I've broken hammer pins. I've broken hammer springs. Um, you know, I've broken extractors. Still got the original optic on it. Over here, I've got an AK-47. Okay. Uh, the gun itself has a total of about 12,000 rounds. The optic on here has only done about, uh, about 4,000 rounds. Um, now at around 10,000 rounds, 
I broke the recoil spring. Okay, so don't say an AK-47 doesn't break. I break AK-47. So I broke the recoil spring on this. Um, now, changing out a recoil spring is easy. However, if you don't have one, I mean, the gun is out of the fight, okay? Um, so again, the optic... No problems, right? Uh, you know, of course, the AK-47 has a little bit more recoil than the AR-15. Uh, this optic's been doing great on it. And also, it's on, it's over the gas tube. This area over here gets very hot. Uh, this optic, this house on uh, uh, 503CUGR. There's a green dot. Um, uh, it's been, you know, it's been, it's been holding up great under the recoil and under the heat. And from the, you know, the heat of being over the, of, over the gas tube. Okay, uh, over here. I've got three pistols. These are all G17s that I built. Now, I specifically built these um, so that I could put an optic on it. Uh, at the time, back in 2020, um, you know, I had seen that, that, you know, I came to the conclusion that uh, people would shoot pistols, would learn to shoot pistols uh, faster, better if they had optics on it. Um, and I, you know, basically I was interested in buying a, a Glock MOS. However, in 2020, there were none available. So I said, okay, to hell with that. I'm going to build my own. Um, so I built three of these. Uh, each of these have uh, more than 10,000 rounds on them. I, I have broken the firing pins on them. Uh, and I have broken, on one of them, I broke the trigger spring. Um, I think that's the only parts that really broke on these guns. Um, so, but they, these are the original optics that went on it, okay? Uh, and the gun's been doing great. Um, no, no problems at all. Very happy with it. So, again, the point here is that, it, it, you know, the hollow suns will most likely outlast the gun, okay? Now, let me put this down for a minute. So, I'm, I'm not saying that um, other optics won't do just as well, right? Um, you know, like, uh, for example, the SIGs. I'm pretty sure that they'll do equally as well. Um, I, I don't know, but I, I would think so. I think they're built to uh, professional standards, but I don't have experience with those. I have experience with these, okay? I have actually done the round counts. You guys can see the, you know, you guys follow my channel, you know there's like tens of thousands of shell cases on the ground, okay? So you guys following my channel know these guns do lots of shooting, okay? Um, and so I can tell you what my actual practical experience is with this. A little bit more this way. Okay, my 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 my, my practical experience with this is that the hollow suns uh, will outlast the gun. So uh, I know I've mentioned it before in other videos, but I thought that I should make it a, a headline item. Um, and I don't get paid by house on or anything like that. Uh, but but I think it's it, it it's the, I think these are very good economy optics all of these are pretty much in the 300 dollars range okay um and over over here uh i've got the hollow sun um 507k that i use on my everyday carry uh let's talk a little bit about the battery life for a second battery life is not what they tell you it is going to be uh when they quote you like the 50,000 hours it's under very ideal circumstances um usually it's like not only mostly sitting in your safe okay I keep these all in, uh, all the rifles, two MOA dot uh, with the 65 MOA circle. <laughs> the 68 5 MOA circle is, is, is worth it. Pay the extra money. Uh, it, makes, it, makes a big, it makes a big difference when you're doing fast target acquisition. <laughs> um, so uh, all, all of these rifles, usually within a year, I have to change the battery. Okay? Now, I keep these in manual mode. Uh, I'm sure if I kept it in solar powered mode, I would probably get more battery life out of it. However, it's just not practical because sometimes, you know, it, it, you know, I might be in a shady area shooting into a sunny area. Um, I need to be able to adjust the, you know, I, I need to be able to quickly adjust the brightness level to what I need it. Or let's say if I'm shooting at night, I, I have to be able to quickly adjust it, you know, to match the light that I'm using. Okay. Um, so in manual mode, right. Uh, I get about about a year out of most of these uh, uh, most of these optics as far as the battery. Okay, now on my carry gun, I usually get about a month. Okay, so this is the uh, 507K. It does not have the solar panel, so I don't have the option of even putting it in an auto adjust mode, which I, which would actually be practical on the carry gun because 
which in would you know if this had a solar panel like this one over here right when it goes into the holster in solar mode it would dim itself down and it would conserve the battery uh however um like right now it's in the holster it's in daylight brightness and i have to keep it in daylight brightness because let's say right now i got a sun in that direction i need to be able to come out of the holster you know point the gun in the direction of the sun and be, still be able to see the reticle okay so um i have to I have to keep it at that brightness level where i can use it under the brightest possible conditions in which case it will also work let's say at night under all you know in all conditions okay um so in, at that setting level i get about a, i get about a month to six weeks out of it uh, i think at one at one time i think it actually gave me eight weeks but most of the time i get uh four to six weeks okay um and what I do is I just buy the batteries in bulk. The 1632 batteries, I, I usually get like a like a 30 pack or something. Um, you know, I will get three 10 packs or whatever. But I buy them in bulk, uh, and I just know that you know every month um, I'm, I'm changing the batteries. Like every morning when I take the holster out of the safe, you know, I do a, you know I blow it out right because usually, yeah. First of all, when I take the gun, when I get home, I take the whole gun, I put the whole thing in the safe. I don't remove it from the holster because the holster is the safety mechanism. So what I'll do is I'll before I put it away, I'll just take a look in there, make sure I see my my dot, um, put in the safe in the morning. Same thing. I'll just look at it, make sure I can see my third. I, I keep in 32 and circle only. I'll blow it out because basically the optic is a lint trap. Um, and then I'll put it back on my belt and I'm good to go. Okay, gun stays in the holster until I'm ready to shoot it. It does not come out of the holster. Um, you know, I don't, I don't, you know, it just, that's how it goes to the safe. That from the safe, it goes back on my belt the next day. Um, so practically speaking, you're going to get about a month of battery life out of it. Uh, these other optics that mostly sit in the safe, you're going to get about a year. Okay. And that, you know, that's if you're in, in manual mode and with regular use. Okay. If you go to the range like two or three times a year, um, and it, it sits in the safe in solar power mode. Yeah, I mean, maybe you'll get close to the five years, but that's just, it's just not practical for me the way I, you know, the, the way I use these guns. So, um, but anyway, the whole point of this video is that the optic, as far as durability, the, 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 uh, these Holosun optics will outlast the guns. You're going to break other things. You're going to break, you're going to break uh, triggers. You're going to break bolts. You're going to break other stuff on the gun. Uh, but, but these Holosun optics will most likely outlast the gun. So, uh, and I, I do not know what other optics will do. Um, I can only tell you guys my experience. Um, you know, you, you know, I can't say what this brand or that brand or the other brand. You know, I can only tell you guys what my practical experience is. Um, and the way, I, the way I approach this is, you know, here's the thing. I use these guns to, you know, travel around to different ranges and train people, okay? Um, and so basically, I, you know, for those... You know, now if, if, if it's guns that I'm just using for my personal self, yeah, sure. Like, you know, maybe I want the absolute best, but for guns that I'm using to train other people, I want the cheapest guns that will do the job, right? Um, because why? Because it's more profitable, right? So I want the cheapest guns that will do the job. Um, and I, you know, as far as the optics go, I started off with cheaper ones, all right? And they just were, I was having problems, they were not holding zero. Or you know, or, or the uh, the electronics were shaking loose, um, you know. And basically, I just I kept you know so, some of them uh, the uh, they weren't bright enough, whatever. I just kept going up the price scale until I got to the level that all of a sudden I got an optic that that performs the way I needed to perform, right? And and that that's how I got to the house, right? So. Um, I didn't start from the top down. I didn't start, okay, what's the most expensive? Let me start with that and then let me see how I can save some money and maybe drop down level, drop down to level. I started with like the, the, the $20 ones, $25 ones on, uh, on, uh, on Amazon. And the reason I started off with that is because when I first started shooting, it was iron sights. Um, everything was iron sights and I was not immediately sold um, on the idea of a red dot on the rifle. They didn't exist for pistols yet. I wasn't immediately you know, sold on this idea of a red dot for a rifle. So I got the $25 one, uh, threw it on one of these uh, ARs, um, and I could immediately see a, a big difference when I was training people, right? When I was training people, I could see that, 
even with that $25 cheap optic, um, I was able to get people to hit the targets a lot faster. I saw that they enjoyed shooting more, right? Especially women. Women love shooting optics. They don't like iron sights very much. So immediately I'm like, okay, wow, this is a great way to attract more women into this, you know, into this hobby, okay? Um, and then, you know, I, I, I saw that, you know, I saw that, that was pretty consistent. Um, and at that point I'm like, okay, I need, uh, you know, I want to stay as cheap as possible, but at the same time, I want the most reliable optic I can pretty much get that will get my job, you know, that will get the job done. That's how I got to the house. Um, and then uh, as soon as uh, they started becoming popular on pistols, you know, I, I wanted to get, I wanted to get them on the pistol as fast as possible. And what I saw initially is that, you know, when I had the optics on the rifles, not on the pistols, what I saw is that most people, especially women, they wanted to shoot the rifles. They didn't really care so much for the pistols. As soon as I put them, put the optics on the pistols, all of a sudden it was, it was back to like 50, 50 where they wanted to shoot the rifles, but they also wanted to shoot the pistols. So, so there was a big difference. I, as soon as I put the optic on the pistols, all of a sudden, women want to shoot these. Okay, so it makes a big difference. Uh, you know, when you're training, uh, you know, when you when you're introducing uh, new people to this, especially people that are not like completely sold on the idea, right? Because if you got somebody that's already into guns before they even pick up a gun. I mean, they're going to enjoy whatever you give to them. But um, if you got, you know, like most women, when they come into this sport, they're like, okay, I'll try it out. I'll see if I like it. I don't know, you know. Um, and, and that's where you pretty much have to hook them. You know, we, we, we want to get them. We want to bring them to our side. Um, you know, we want them voting for gun rights. Um, so I want to give them a gun that I know that they're going to immediately like. They're going to love. They're going to want to, you know, they're going to want to shoot it. They're going to want to buy guns. You know, they're going to want to become gun owners. Uh, they're going to become gun enthusiasts. Uh, they're going to become they're going to become pro gun rights voters. OK, um, so that the, the optics have gone a long way uh, towards, you know, getting, you know, towards that goal. OK, um, so uh, there it is. Um, house on house on optics. They will outlast your gun. Uh, and I'm not saying that there's not better optics out there or maybe more durable optics, uh, but this is my experience with these with these optics. Okay, uh, they're they're fairly cheap. They they come in at about three hundred dollars, and they will outlast your gun. They got good battery life. Okay, uh, you know solar powered with a battery backup. Um, you know I've had these things in the rain and the snow and the mud. And, you know, uh, I mean they're good. I mean that's, that's all I can say. I mean the, the round count speaks for itself. So thanks for watching. Um, if you're not a member of the channel, subscribe. Make sure you guys are following me on Odyssey. That's uh, an, an uncensored platform. Um, the, that platform is spelled O-D-Y-S-E-E.com. And my channel name over there is Pocono Tactical. Uh, so make sure you also subscribe over there in case I disappear from here. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you all soon.